online and those that are physically here you are welcome in the presence of the Lord we bow our heads in prayer Heavenly Father we express our gratitude to you for this evening we thank you for drawing us from wherever we are into your presence some of us are traveling in traffic jam some of us are traveling to different places. Some of us are still in offices. Some of us are physically here. Lord, we are in your presence. Because your word declares that there is no house that we can build on earth that can accommodate you, that can contain you. So wherever we are, physically and online we are in your presence and so Lord we take this opportunity to express our gratitude like David did in Psalm 122 and he proclaimed that I was glad when they go into the house of the Lord Father receive us as we come in your presence we come to bow at your feet we come to kneel before you, O oh Lord, to pour out our hearts. So we pray that, Lord, you accept us as we come. That we will worship you in the spirit and in the truth. That this will not be the tradition, the traditional way of coming to you every Wednesday. But it shall be a special service that will open our hearts to you. We will surrender our thoughts to you. The Lord will not, be, will not allow to be distracted, but we shall fix our eyes on you. We shall seek your face. Lord, we shall search you while you are still found. And while you are still near, we shall call on you. We know that, Lord, your ears are always open. To receive our calls when we call on to you. So this evening as we come before you, Lord, we pray that you gather our souls, gather our hearts from wherever the devil has scattered them. Father, that we'll be able to concentrate because we are in you, the great God. The great I am. May we give you the due respect, O Lord. That will not allow to be divided, will not allow to be distracted. Because we have a divine appointment with you this evening. And so we invite you in our midst, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord, to come and move among us. To come and rekindle our faith. To come and challenge us. Lord, as we worship you, that we shall yield to him. When he points to our wickedness, the Lord will genuinely repent. When he points to our points of thanksgiving, we'll give you the due thanks of giving. The Lord, when he challenges us to adore you, that we shall adore you. And we shall lift your name above all other things. 
And we shall lift your name above every circumstance around us. Because we are before you, the Almighty God, the God of hosts, the one who fights our battles, the one who hears our prayers, the one who knows the desires and the secrets of our hearts, the great I am, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Lord, it is you that we choose to worship this evening. It is you that we choose to adore. So Lord, receive us as we come because your word calls us to come as we are. And Lord, we are sure that when we come, we will not live the same way we have come. We come stained with the sin, but we will go while we have been forgiven, while we have been washed, and we will be as white as snow. We go while burdened, our hearts heavy, but Lord, we pour them before you, and we will go with light yokes, Lord, that will carry. Because you say, come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And Peter tells us to cast all our burdens onto you. Thank you, Lord, that you have invited us this evening to receive our burdens. You have invited us this evening, Lord, to ex for an exchange. Lord, we are exchanging with you the heavy yokes that you give us the light one that you have for us to carry. For you promised that we are two, three, God, that you will be in the midst. Be in our midst this evening, Lord, that we will feel your presence that we will embrace you in a new way. That even by the time we live here, the people will see, the people will meet, the people will hear from us, will know that we have been in your presence. May we have a special encounter this evening, Lord. May this evening be a special one, O oh Lord. That someone who has come with the tears, you'll wipe out the tears. That someone who has come stained with the sin, Lord, you will forgive, you will cleanse. That somebody who has come with a yearning for a new testimony, who has come with an old song, who has come, Lord, with an old testimony, Lord, you will meet each one of us at our point of need that will go back transformed to your praise and to your glory. So we surrender our time to you in your presence. We surrender it to you. Use us, Lord, as true worshipers to worship you, even as some of us lead and share your word. May we be your vessels appointed, appointed by you this evening. Be in these machines, Lord, that they will be clear be, Lord, in the network that shall be stable. Be in our voices as we sing, as we lift your name on high, as we glorify your name, Lord, that we shall not entertain, but we will minister. And that souls will be touched, souls will be uplifted, that somebody will experience a fresh encounter with you. So take over. For we know you are here. Because you promised that we are two or three gather. Right in their midst you are. We receive you, Heavenly Father. We receive you, God the Son. We receive you, God the Holy Spirit. Give us that freedom and liberty in your presence to express ourselves before you. As we repent, as we worship, as we pray, Lord, that you will receive our prayer. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me ask the choir to continue from here. And that we believe that the Lord will continue to bless us.
Continue to worship the Lord, continue praising the Lord, continue lifting his name on high, continue with that declaration that there is nobody like him in heaven and on earth, even under the earth. There is no one like him, there is no one like Jesus, there is no one like the Lord God Almighty, the one who redeemed us from Egypt, from slavery and brought us to the promised land. The one who has walked with us in the previous times is the one walking us through this time. Is the one that will lead us through the time that is to come. The one who is the great I am. The one who says yes and nobody says no. The one who says no and no one can say yes. The one who opens and nobody shuts. The one who calls us to himself 
the one who created us in his image is the one that is worshipped the one that even the heavenly preachers worship declaring holy 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 is the lord the lord of hosts the lord most high so lord as we come before you O oh lord we recognize your great love that you have for us we identify with the lamentations O oh lord say the great the steadfast love of the lord never ceases his mercies are never come to an end father we thank you that even when we are stained with this sin you receive us because of your love because of your love you gave your only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life we would have perished long ago lord our god because we are not righteous but because of our faith in the lord jesus the one who shed his blood for our sanctification the one who paid the price on the cross the one who said it is finished the one who is seated at your right hand interceding for us O oh lord you have spared us O oh lord thank you for that love O oh lord thank you for your mercies O oh lord because in your mercy and in your compassion lord you forgive us and so we approach your throne of grace O oh lord in repentance O oh god knowing that lord we sin against you in so many ways O oh lord just today we don't know how many sins we have committed but because of your love and because of your mercy lord you have not done to us as we deserve you have put our sins far away when we repent O oh lord you do not regret you just forgive so we are before you this evening O oh lord pleading with you O oh heavenly father that you forgive us O oh lord forgive us our sins lord that we have known and those that you have not known have mercy upon us and wash us as white as snow release us O oh lord cleanse us O oh lord restore us to yourself O oh lord in our repentance lord renew our relationship with you so that you can hear our prayer so that you can forgive us O oh lord so that you can heal us isaiah 59 2 says that we shouldn't think your hand is too short to save but lord our sins have made you lord close your ears from us oh lord and so we approach your throne of grace and repentance lord forgive us oh heavenly father those sins that have been even done on our behalf have mass upon us lord that our prayers will lord will be answered have forgive us lord so that you answer us when we pray so that lord we have a closer walk with you so that you use us to do greater exploits because those who believe in you will do greater exploits so have mass upon us even the father forgive us O oh lord and show us O oh lord your new mercies lord show us your new mercies lord that we shall be able to celebrate your goodness we shall be able to celebrate your kindness to us thank you lord for your forgiving god you are a faithful god O oh lord because you have your faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. And so, Lord, our hope is in you. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord. Our hope is only in you, Heavenly Father. And so, even as we come, burdened, Lord, our hope is in you. We have family burdens, our hope is in you, Lord, to sort them out. Lord, our hope is in you. Even to solve this, to fight this monster, homosexuality hitting us, and all its associated effects. Our hope is in you, Lord. We have been labeled as a poor continent, as a poor country, but we worship here, rich God. We depend on you, O oh Lord, who knows our the hearts, the desires of our hearts. We depend on you, who defend the defenseless, O oh Lord. Those of us, Lord, who are feeling insecure, this evening we take refuge in you. We trust in you, O oh Lord. Those of us who are being haunted, we trust in you. The Lord, you will fight our battles, O oh God. Those of us who are fighting curses, we trust in you. That you will avert the curses against us. That you will break them, O oh Lord. That we even break the covenants that we have and that have been, we've been involved into, O oh Lord. 
knowing or not knowing, our hope is in you, O oh Lord. For provision, we, are, we are, have so many needs, so many demands, Lord, that we have. But Father, our hope is in you. We don't even know what the future holds, but we know you who knows the future. And so our hope is in you. We have patience, and some of us are really sick, but our hope is in you for healing. Our hope is in you for deliverance. So being tormented by powers of darkness, our hope is in you, who gave us authority to trample over scorpions and serpents. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord, who gave us power to heal, who gave us power to rebuke powers of darkness. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord, our God. There are many things you have pleaded, Lord, for, for a long time, but our hope is in you for breakthrough. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord, our God. There are many uncertainties in our lives, but our hope is in you, O oh Lord. You are the solid rock, O oh Lord, on which we stand. And so, Lord, we lift our hearts to you, O oh Heavenly Father. Our children, we are believing in you, O oh Lord, that, Lord, they will, not, they will not be changed by the world, but they will be changing agents of this world. The Lord, they will move out like arrows, fighting and the devil and winning him, O oh Lord. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father. Some of us have been smeared with mud, but our hope is in you to cleanse us, O oh Lord, to wash us, O oh Lord, to make things turn around us, O oh Lord. It is you who turns what the devil intends for bad, for evil, into our good. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord, you who turns our mourning into dancing. We put our faith in you and our hope in you this evening, Lord. Father, we cry to you for many things, O oh Lord, around us, O oh Lord. Our hope is in you, O oh Lord. Probably some of us have been regarded as failures. But Lord, you declare that we are more than conquerors. We are winners. And so, Lord, our hope is in you. Some of us, we are weak. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Without you, Lord, we are empty. But we come to be filled, O oh Lord. We come this evening to be filled, Heavenly Father. We then are for empty our hearts. We empty our hearts, O oh Lord, that you fill them, O oh God. We empty our hearts of evil. We empty our hearts of luck. We empty our hearts of failures. We empty our hearts of evil desires, Lord. That you fill us with godly desires, Heavenly Father. We have to our hearts that you fill us with your power to overcome the temptations of the flesh. Father, we come before you thirsty that you quench our thirst, O oh Lord, yearning for your word. Quench our thirst, Heavenly Father. There is none like you. That's why we've sung and said you do miracles. Do a miracle for us this evening. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. I dare not trust my Jesus Christ and believe on Jesus' name. Oh, have some strength wherever you are if you are able to stand just stand and declare and declare your hope in the Lord declare that other grounds are sinking sun money is sinking sun positions are sinking sun academic credentials are sinking sun technical know who is sinking sun our hope is in Christ the solid rock please play that hymn again we are going to sing the whole of it and we are singing it by faith we are confessing it and confession is possession. Please play that song. Please this, this play the hymn, please. This play the hymn. My hope is built on nothing less. We have hoped in people that have let us down. We have hoped in governments that have let us down. Our hope is 
in the Lord Jesus Christ, who never leaves us, who never departs from us. way we will rest on his unchanging grace hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise, praise the lord, lord. Once, once again you are warmly welcome, welcome to this uh, midweek service we praise the lord for you being here those of you who are here physically those who are online we bless the lord for you we believe there are those of us who are traveling but may the lord still bless you wherever you are may he be your solid rock as you travel and trust only in him. Praise the Lord. So I would like to recognize the presence of our speaker, uh, Mr. Samuel Plot. He's going to speak to us. He's part of us. He heads missions and evangelism here and also accompanied by his wife, Alice Oplot, who also is part of us, heading prayer and intercession. We bless the Lord for your ministry. May the Lord use you this evening. Let me invite our sister who has the reading to take the reading and immediately Sam will come and speak to us. Praise the Lord, brethren. Our reading 
is taken from Luke chapter 10, verse 1 to 23. Luke chapter 10, from verse 1 to 23. Our heading reads, Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I'm sending you out as lamps, as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to, your, to our feet we weep of against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Chapter 13. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethesaid. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented a long ago, sitting in the sackcloth and ashes, but it will be more bearable in the judgment for the Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will be ex exalted to heaven. You shall be brought down to Hardens. Chapter 16. The one, who, the one who hears you, hears me. And the one who rejects you, reject, the one who rejects you, rejects me. And the one who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Chapter 17. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such, a, for such was your gra gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by the Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father. Oh, who the Father is, expect, except the Father, except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Then turning to the disciples, He said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Brethren, that's the end of the reading.
Praise the Lord. Thank you very much uh, for the reading. I'm going to ask Emma to help me if he can project. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I'm sure that's better now, Reverend. Emma, are you with me? Hallelujah. Uh, thank you very much for our reading. I'd like us to pray, uh, even as we, we begin our sharing. Lord, we commit ourselves to you now, O oh God. I pray that you speak to us. May we see Jesus exalted, lifted up, Lord and King. Lord, may we follow him in his purpose especially to reach the nations and bring all men to hear of his love and to be reconciled to him. We thank you, we praise you as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sam Opolot, uh, those are my names. It's a long reading. I'll limit myself to the first 11 verses. I may touch on the, the other verses as well, but I'll limit myself mostly to the first 11 verses. Uh, my wife has already been introduced, but let me ask you to stand so that these people can see what real sunshine looks like. Just in case, in case they don't know, uh, that's what sunshine looks like. Hallelujah. I sometimes see people and uh, I see men praising their wives. And in my heart I'm thinking, man, if you had seen my wife, you'd not say the things you're saying. I hear people saying, my wife is the most beautiful and in my heart, I'm thinking, you haven't seen mine. Hallelujah. We've been married for, I think, 17 years this year. And we have two children, Timothy and Cheryl. They're at school. They actually don't know that I'm preaching. So I'm sure if they knew, they would have said the greetings. Let's go together, Emma, please. Let's follow the slides if that's possible. <clears throat> I serve with, uh, my life is complicated, but also simple. Um, for the last several years, since 1998, don't start guessing my age now, eh? But since 1998, I have been involved in Christian ministry. Uh, that's been my life. I met my wife uh, some time after that. We got married and we've been serving together since then. Currently, I serve with Africa Inland Mission uh, and I'm there on secondment from Global Link Africa. And it's a pleasure because the passage resonates very much with the things that these two organizations do but also resonates a lot with what my heart is passionate about if we can go to the next slide emma okay forget about that let's move on to the next one thank you when i read the passage i was asked to seek, speak about I'm not sure that you can read. I hope so. When I read the passage, I was, I was asked to speak on the one thing that came to mind 
was the idea of the Great Commission. Now, we usually run to Matthew chapter 28 from verses 18 to 20 when we think about the Great Commission. And Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, are those verses where Jesus stands before his disciples. He is resurrected. And he has told them to go back, to go to, to wait for him. And he appears before them after his resurrection. And he says to them, all authority is given to me. All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Those are the words that Jesus says to the disciples. And there are three very distinct things around that command. There is probably more. But three things stand out for me. Number one is the command to go. Hallelujah. The command to do what? To go. The second is the purpose for going. To make disciples. To make more followers of Jesus. To bring others into the kingdom. The third is the idea of how far. To all nations. When we think of all nations, I'm reminded of Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, where we are told that John stands and he sees a large crowd of men and women standing before the throne from every tongue, every tribe, every nation. The Great Commission is about going to make disciples of all nations. That is what came to mind when I read Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 23. The reminder that Jesus is concerned and would like you and I to take that step to bring others to the kingdom. And not just those within our neighborhood but to have the nations in mind. That, friends, is what we usually call the Great Commission. There was a man called James Hudson Taylor. He was a missionary to China. He founded what, was, what is called the China Inland Mission. And Hudson Taylor says that the Great Commission is not just an opinion to consider. No, it's not an opinion to consider. It is a command to obey. So it's not something we, we sit around tables and discuss eh? and just talk about. You know, you know Jesus actually wants us to make disciples, eh? Hey, you know he wants all nations, eh? Hey, hey, so, yeah, let's pray about it, eh? No, 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 no. It's not just an opinion to discuss, to philosophize and theologize about. No, it is a command. It is a command to do what? To obey. Pray that the Lord would help us to realize that this is not simply an opinion to think about or process. You know, these days we use, we use the word process. I am still processing. Eh? Someone tells you something. I am still what? I'm still processing. We process a lot. 
a brother approaches you and you take forever processing, hallelujah. The brother sees a sister, but, and it's a good sister. He first goes to fast and pray and wait and process. No courage to stand up and be counted. The Great Commission is not for processing, it's for obedience. Hallelujah. And so friends, to our passage now. In our passage of the day, and, and, and as we think of the Great Commission, I would like to suggest that there are four things that sort of form a pattern to follow as we respond to the command to go and make disciples. Emma, if we can move to the next slide. I would like to suggest that there are four things that form a pattern that we can follow as we go. The first thing I see is, number one, as we see in verses one and two, and I'll touch on those shortly, but let me just outline these four things. Number one, we go as his workers. We go as his workers. We see that in verses one and two. Verses 3 and 4, we go trusting in his providence. Verses 5 to 8, we go in partnership. And verses 9 to 11, we go to proclaim his kingdom. Those are four things. And so let's quickly run through these four things. First, next slide please, Emma. First, the idea of going as his workers. Let's, let's look at the verses. We are told that, uh, let me read for you. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every time and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Listen, this passage follows one in, in chapter 9 where Jesus sent out the 12. Okay? He had earlier sent out the 12 with very similar instructions as, as he gave to these ones. The 12, obviously, we know they were the apostles, isn't it? So the apostles went and came back. Now Jesus appoints the 72. He gathers from among his followers the 72 and he sends them. We are not given the details of who exactly they were, but we are told he appointed the 72. And so when it uses, when the, verse, when the, when, when the Bible says, says others, we are, this, this is as a follow-up on his assignment on the, on the 12. And you see that in, in chapter, chapter 9. But he sends out the 72. And two things. Number one, it is him who did what? Who appointed them. It is him who appointed them. It is him who gave instructions to the disciples. It is him who gives us instructions to go. It is him who sends. And as if to affirm that, in the very next verse, he says, the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. But then he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers. Who sends? Him. That means that we do not go by our own authority. We also do not go to do our own thing. We go commissioned by him. Hallelujah. We go as his workers to represent him. But it's also important to know that he actually says the, lab, the harvest is plentiful. There are many people who still don't know Christ. There are many. In our neighborhoods, they are there. Amen. 
and our families there. There There are many. But there are also communities, both in this country and beyond, where the whole community does not have a church. There are no known Christians. It's actually true. You know in Uganda we celebrate, we have a preacher for every street. You could almost say we have a preacher for every corridor. If we wanted preachers in every corridor, in every house, we would find them. We go to our churches and our churches are full. Some churches have overflow. And even the overflow has what? Overflow. It is true. There are days when we are full here. You wait. On 30th, we have one service. Is that true, Reverend? Hey. On 30th, we have one service. We will have overflow plus overflow. And it's easy for us to imagine as we are cushioned by that reality, to imagine that so many people are actually here. But I tell you the truth, there are so many people out there who still are not in church. They need someone to step out and reach out to them. But also it's, it's also important for us as a church to think, yes, we need to think about filling our church. But friends, there are communities and people in this country and beyond where we need to send others to go and live there so that they can begin churches there. So we go as his workers. We are his workers because we respond to his command. We are his workers because he appoints us and he sends us. We are his workers because we represent him. I think it was last Sunday we were being told that we are ambassadors. The idea of the representative of the kingdom. We go as his workers. I need to run now because, yeah. The second thing is we go trusting in his providence. Look, listen. Listen to what Jesus says. He says to them, I send you as lambs among wolves. Now think. A lamb. Do you know what a lamb is? What is a lamb? Eh? It's a sheep. It's a sheep, eh? A young one of a sheep. It's a tiny, very vulnerable little sheep. Sheep in themselves are vulnerable, even when they are big. Now think about a lamb. And Jesus is saying, I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. The wolves could devour the lamb. He's saying, as you go, actually, there is the possibility of danger. There is the possibility of trouble as you go. The wolves are out there. They will devour you. They can Then, as if that's not enough, he says, take no pass, no bag, no sandal, no extra tunic. Go as you are. First, there is danger. But now you are saying that I should not even carry extra. If I run out, out, what happens? How am I going to eat? All those questions begin to go through your mind. What is Jesus up to? And to add salt to injury, he even says, I put there and for good measure, he says, don't greet anyone as you go. Don't go around greeting, greeting people. Hey, how are you? Eh? Hey, how are you? Uh-uh. 
I would like to suggest that there are three things here. Number one is when you respond to going, to serving him, there is exposure to trouble. It is inevitable. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, what makes you think that you will be spared? There is the possibility of danger, exposure to trouble. Every genuine response to the call of God comes with the demand to sacrifice and give up something. It does. It comes with the possibility of actual danger, possibly even death. And yet, true as that may be, Jesus is clear. Stay focused on the assignment. Don't go around greeting everyone. You have a task. Focus on it. Don't be distracted. Is Jesus careless? Does he not care? I would like to suggest that he actually does. And sometimes you can take things like this and get involved in careless, reckless adventure. This is not a call to carelessness. Friends, this is a call to a total surrender and to a total trust that God would protect and provide for his servants. It is a call to that place of recognizing that this commission is not mine, this commission is his. This assignment is not mine, this assignment is his. If it comes with danger, he will take care of me. When I have need, as we always do, and we will see this shortly. He will take care of those needs. Now, they may not happen the way I want. They may not happen in the time I want. They may not happen in the style I want. But I tell you the truth. He who sits in heaven, when he gives you an assignment, he will take care of you and he will provide for you. Does it mean it will be easy? Not necessarily, for it was not easy for Jesus. It was not easy to carry that cross. It was not easy to walk the dust of the earth of Galilee every day. It was not easy to know that the man I sit next to is about to betray me for 30 pieces of silver. No, it was not easy. It wasn't easy to give up the glory of heaven. The glory of heaven, having the very nature of God. It wasn't easy to come down and take the form of a human being. No, it wasn't easy for Christ. It won't be easy for you and me as we respond. Yet, he demands of us that we must. Hallelujah. But here is the good news. When he says don't carry anything. When he says I'm sending you as wolves among sh as sheep among wolves. How did I get that one? As sheep among wolves. He says to them, Emma we could go to the next slide. He says to them when you arrive where you arrive. Look out for the man of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. You will go and have made provision that when you arrive where you arrive, there will be people who will receive you. Go to their homes. They will feed you. Go to their homes. They'll give you shelter. They'll give you where to sleep. Go to their homes. They will protect you. In fact, Jesus is not careless. He knows that provision has been made for his servants when they arrive.
When you go, you'll find people who will partner with you in this assignment. So yes, you have fears. Yes, you have concerns. Yes, you have struggles. And we do. But God knows them. And God has appointed some to partner and walk and stand with us as we go. The problem is sometimes those of us who are appointed to be partners have become very stingy. We hold on to what we have and we don't want to release. Our hearts are not converted to share in the partnership of propelling the gospel. We are so concerned sometimes of our own things. We are so concerned about acquiring and amassing. And that overshadows the conviction that you feel in your heart to do something for the kingdom. To take that extra step to stand with a man of God or a woman of God. To stand with somebody who is going, we hold on to what we have. May God open our hearts to be generous, to open our homes, to open our purses and handbags, to be lo not loose, but to be careful not to be too stingy. But to identify with God's mission and support God's mission and make sure that the message of the gospel actually permeates our country and overflows to other nations. May God help Lueza to embrace the challenge. Friends, we've heard over and over again that there is something that God wants to use this chapel for. May God help us to see it and rally our resources to it. Brothers and sisters, as much as God has prepared people to receive those who go, God also requires of us to partner with those who are going. Let's rise up and tap into the blessing of sowing into the kingdom by releasing that which God has given to us, whatever it is, and we end out differently. Friends, you might be thinking I'm talking about money. Yes, I am. I'm talking about money. But I'm also talking about all other things that make it possible for people to go and serve. Emma, next slide, please. This is the last thing. When we go, what do we got to do? Verses 9 to 11, Jesus says, go heal the sick and tell those people that the kingdom of God is what? Is near. Heal the sick and tell them that the kingdom of God is near. Those, that verse alone is very loaded. Why? Because it points to the fact that God is is concerned about all suffering. The suffering here on earth, but also eternal suffering. Eternal suffering is that which we experience if we miss Jesus. It is real, my brother, my sister. It is real. The way to help the nations, the way for us to escape eternal suffering is to embrace Jesus. And Jesus says, tell them the kingdom of God is here. He himself represents the kingdom. He is the key to the kingdom. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the entrance to the kingdom.
tell them, the kingdom of God is near. But he also says, heal the sick. As much as we are concerned about getting everybody to heaven, we also ought to be concerned about how they are while they are here on earth. The two never have to be divorced. No. They've always been one and the same thing. If God's love permeates you, you will love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you'll take care of your neighbor. But also you'll tell them about the kingdom of God. Let me end. My brother, my sister, Emma, next slide, please. As I end, my question is, how will you respond? What has God said to you? Are you ready to go? What is it that God has been telling you to do? And you've paid a deaf ear. You have feared. You have hesitated. You've listened to other voices. He has challenged you over and over and over again. But every time there is that voice within you that says, no, 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 not now. Oh, you've shared it with somebody and they've told you, what if, what if, what about, what if, just in case. Are you ready to part now? Who is that one person? What is that one ministry? What is that one thing that God has placed in your heart for which you have a resource? It might be a gifting you have. It might be a financial resource you have. It might be some material resource you have. It might be somebody you know that you can connect. What is it? Are you willing and ready to partner? I'm not going to ask if we are ready to pray because we ought to be ready to pray. We're all called to pray. Or maybe your gift is talking like me. Will you mobilize? Maybe that's your gift connect people, to mobilize, to be a trumpet blower. The one who points others to this great commission and challenges them to say, step up, respond. What is it for you? And I'm going to ask Reverend to come and pray with us as we, we end up. Please do stand so that we can pray. Let us bow and sing prayer. <clears throat> Let me just ask us to pray with thanksgiving for, to the Lord for this word that has come to us. Each time the word of the Lord comes to us, comes in a new way. We've heard that this is a command. It's not an opinion to discuss and debate. It's not something to process, but it's a command to obey. And he says the harvest is in plenty, so wherever we are, the harvest is there. And the questions that he has raised at the end, how many of us are ready? How many of us have obeyed? 
How many times have we resisted that we could not even tell people that we are born again? That we do not ask people where they pray from? May we ask God to have mass upon us. We are his workers. Wherever we are, wherever the Lord has deployed us, Lord, help us to know that that is your vineyard. We are in different places. We are of different professions. We are practicing different businesses. Help us to know that having also been reminded that we are your ambassadors, we are there representing you and working for you. And Lord, this country, this world will be different from what it is now if we embraced this idea. Help us, Lord, to know and practice your work. We have known that we ought to trust in you, trusting in your providence. Many times we have not done your work because we want to fit in, we want to provision, and we have, provide, we have trusted in our own ways of provision, not trusted in your own ways. We pray that you have mass upon us. Sometimes we've been selfish that we have labeled different places as dry places, desert places. And we've not been able to go. We've not been able to obey your command. We've not been able to minister. But this evening we are surrendering ourselves to you. Many times we have, we have Lord, got stuck and we have clung to those things that are distracting us. The pass, the bags, the greeting, the money, the material things, forgetting that they are fleeting and forgetting that it is you who has provided. Help us to know that Abraham went with nothing but you. Only on you. We have seen that these people depended on you and you provided for them. You put people there to house them, to protect them, to provide everything they needed to do your ministry. No wonder your church grew from the 12 that believed in you, the, the 11 in fact that you commissioned to greater numbers that we see today. Have mass upon us that we are in great numbers, but we have failed to reach out to the greater numbers that we are out there who do not know you. Because we have not been certain. This evening, help us to change our attitude. 
This year we are looking at service. Help us, Lord, to be united. You are speaking to us about partnerships, working together. Help us to establish partnerships in ministry, partnerships in work, partnerships in business, partnerships in study, and partnerships in everything. But also, above all, partnership with you. So many times we've thought we can do it all by our own selves. And we have forgotten you, we have put you aside. But from today onwards, to help us to partner with you from point A to point Z. And wherever you send us, help us to identify those people that you have placed there to provide for us as we do your work. In every aspect, not only in church, because many times when we talk about your work, we are thinking about it in church circles only, but everywhere outside there in the world. Give us people who are going to expand your kingdom, people who are going to enable us to share about your kingdom that is at hand and helping them to discover that your son Jesus Christ reflects your kingdom so that they can be able to escape the eternal suffering. That's why you commissioned them and said, heal the sick, proclaim the kingdom. Give us that power. To heal the sick, but also to proclaim the kingdom. To proclaim your gospel that people will run away from the burning furnace. The eternal suffering. Give us, Lord, all that we need. Help us, Heavenly Father, never to shy away from your gospel. May people know that we are businessmen and women who are born again. May people know that we are practicing whatever profession we are in as godly people. People who know you, who have believed in you, who trust in you, who believe that you, we are your ambassadors who have been posted there and who are there on special assignment from you. People who are going to create a legacy of faith in the organizations, in the companies, in the government offices, wherever we are blessed. Thank you for this message. Bless some was shared with us that will continue to proclaim your gospel because the, your kingdom is at hand. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap in appreciation of the message that we have heard. Thank you, our brother Sam, for sharing with us. We are going to give, and I'll ask, uh, I'll ask that we put the basket and put in our offerings. Yes, as we give in, she would like to share with us something. Praise God, church. God is good. And all the time. Reverend, uh, this is when you're preaching one day and you said that we don't have like enough chairs and I told Jesus in my heart that Jesus one day I'll contribute the chain chairs but I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I said it to my heart. So now I've come here to tell Jesus that I've fulfilled my promise. So Jesus cut some I thank God who has enabled me to do it because it's not easy. Sometimes you promise Jesus and you keep saying, ah, I will do it, I will do it. So I thank God that I've honored my pledge to Jesus. So Jesus, we are even now. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. God bless your name. Amen. Thank you very much, our sister. We, we will consecrate them on Sunday. Derek, take note. They will be consecrated on Sunday for the Lord's ministry. And also we bless you, our sister. The Bible to receive. May the Lord uh, reward you. 
with a hundredfold. In good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That is the practical faith we are talking about. The fulfillment of the Great Commission. Hallelujah. The giving is going on. Please don't forget. You might be waiting for a song, but we are we, we want to finish this and go. We want I want also as a person to thank God for today's message. The messages that are coming my way or our way this, this season, they are timely for a person like me who is transiting into another position of work and to go and advance the kingdom, as the Lord is saying. Uh, what, I don't know how the spirit of the Lord works. We, we didn't know that this will come at the time when one of us is transiting. We went for a retreat, prayed to God, and the Lord gave us topics. Midweek, overnight, Sunday, healing and deliverance. We were there for two consecutive days, praying and trusting the Lord to do what he wants us to do. And these are the topics that came out. And um, also it happened when I was doing, when I was living in Wandegea, I went into prayer and did the preaching schedule. And it was semi related to the transition at that time. And people said, the Reverend knew that he was going. That's why he did this. And guess what? Some, according to the corridor talks, Reverend knew that he was going. Yeah? Chaplain knew that he was going. But we thank God that he's a God who speaks even when we do not know. Hallelujah. So let's keep trusting the Lord and doing his will. And indeed, he says, like he told you, uh, I think it was Elijah, that you go in that desert place, there is a widow who is going to take care of you. But also he said, there are ravens that are going to take care of you. So, friends, Take up the uphill task and advance the kingdom. Whatever the Lord has sent you, see yourself as an ambassador in that organization, in that business, in that community where you are staying, in that family, in that family, in that clan. See yourself as an ambassador. Let us stand up and we pray as we end our time together. Father, we thank you for the offerings we have made in your house. We ask that, Lord, you receive, accept, and bless. And also bless them, the hands that have given. Even for the chairs that we are going to consecrate on Sunday, Lord, we receive them with thanksgiving. A hand that gives is a hand that receives. May you, Lord, make our hands receive more and more that we continue to be the people that are going to be in partnership with you and with your people that you have sent to work among us and those that you send to work among the different people in uh, the different societies where you have blessed them. So Lord, as we leave this place, may we not leave your presence. May your presence go with us. May your Lord providence go with us. May, uh, may the obedience to your command be our priority. And Lord, may we be able to share. May we, Lord, not be scared of anything, but put our trust and our faith in you. So release us with your peace and your blessing. Brethren, the peace of God that transcends all human understanding, keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, keep you, direct you. May that blessing give you the grace to obey the command that the Lord has released to us. May that blessing provide for you in all times. May that blessing go before you that you follow it. May that blessing come after you following you and remain with you and with your beloved ones and all of us now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for coming.
May the Lord richly bless you. Choir, thank you for ministering. On Sunday, we have one service because of the AGM, and it's beginning at 9 o'clock. It's beginning at 9 o'clock. This the AGM. May the good Lord bless you. See you Sunday.